And federal authorities made a quick arrest of another man in connection with Officer French's killing. Jamel Danzi was charged yesterday by federal agents for allegedly acting as a straw purchaser in Indiana to buy the firearm allegedly used in the shooting. Just how big a factor is gun trafficking in Chicago's violence and what can law enforcement do about it? Joining us with more are Ala Lefkowitz, litigation director at Every Town Law. She and Every Town Law are representing the city of Chicago in its suit against West Forth Sports in Indiana for allegedly selling hundreds of illegal guns that wound up on Chicago streets. And Daniel Webster, director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Prevention and Policy. Welcome both of you to Chicago tonight. Uh, Ala Lefkowitz, I'll start with you. What role does straw purchasing and gun trafficking play in Chicago's homicide problem? Thank you for having me. Straw purchasing and gun trafficking play a major role in the gun violence problem in Chicago. We do know that a lot, that in fact, the majority of the guns that end up uh, being crime guns in Chicago come from out of state. And very frequently they are trafficked over state lines, for example, from Missouri or from Indiana where they are first straw purchased by individuals who could pass a background check. And then those individuals uh, provide the firearms to individuals who cannot legally possess the firearms in Chicago. And Daniel Webster, how does this straw purchasing typically work? Is it usually a friend who can legally purchase it buying for a friend that can't? Or is there some kind of pipeline that connects buyers and sellers? Well, typically, uh, there is some relationship of trust between the person who is, in essence, committing a crime, a, a illegal straw purchase, on behalf of someone else. Uh, so they, they do it in part often for money and sometimes some degree of loyalty, but, uh, depending on the relationship. And Daniel Webster, is there a limit on how many guns one person can buy? No, very few states have any limitations on the number of guns that someone can uh, purchase. Uh, there certainly are individuals who you might think of as serial straw purchasers who make a lot of purchases, uh, not for their own use, but for the clear intention to divert them for their own profit to individuals who typically can't legally possess guns and can't get them um, themselves. So the last thing I'll just say, uh, is that um, criminals have a strong preference to get new, what they refer to as fresh guns. They don't want to get something on the street that may have uh, be connected to a shooting that they could get uh, wrapped up into in an investigation. So uh, this connection between the retail sale, the new guns, is a critical one that sort of starts guns into the underground gun market. So a lot of them are just being purchased retail and new. Uh, Ala Lefkowitz, what responsibility does the gun dealer have to be able to identify someone that they think or presume might be buying for someone else? Yes, that's a really important question, and that is exactly the subject of our lawsuit on behalf of the city of Chicago. All FFL, federal firearms licensees, otherwise known as gun dealers, are uh, trained by the ATF to be able to spot straw purchasers. This happens at the beginning when they're originally licensed. It happens at every compliance inspection. So this is something they're very well aware of, uh, uh, kind of the red flags to know what to look out for. And it's unfortunately something that some dealers take um, less seriously than other dealers. And uh, so, Al Lefkowitz, you, you mentioned the lawsuit uh, that you are representing the city of Chicago against this gun store in Gary, Indiana. Just tell us about this lawsuit and why uh, specifically you're going after this store. Absolutely. That's a situation where we've alleged in our complaint that the store for years has been funneling hundreds, if not thousands, of illegal guns into the city of Chicago. And they've been repeatedly told by the ATF that they are not following federal regulations. And, um, you know, it appears that they uh, continue to engage in the kind of conduct, which is really looking the other way when they have individuals uh, that come in and buy, for example, five of the same handguns at the same time, or will buy 19 handguns in a short period. Um, these are all really, you know, red flags that the individual is a trafficker or a straw purchaser. And, and Daniel Webster, the, the legal burden here is that the gun dealer has to knowingly uh, be selling to a gun trafficker or straw purchaser. How difficult is that to prove? 
that's a very high bar to prove, and that uh, legal standard is was put in place, uh, frankly, by the gun industry, uh, who helped sadly are the ones who helped write our federal gun laws. I think it's important to look at this tragedy uh, not simply as a crime, but as a deep policy failure, failure on federal policy uh, to, uh, again, sort of uh, have such a high standard uh, to, to charge people who are really doing uh, criminal acts that are putting guns in the hands of dangerous people. But there are other policies that uh, our research has found that clearly reduce these kinds of uh, uh, straw purchases and trafficking. Um, licensing requirements for, for firearm purchasers, for example. Uh, the fact that... That's something that Illinois you, passed in recent years. Yeah, well, Illinois has had such a law for a while, but they recently strengthened it this year in important ways. Uh, states like Indiana uh, that, do, that have a lot of trafficking do not have these licensing requirements for purchasers, and therefore the, the, the entity that's doing the vetting is someone selling guns um, as opposed to a public safety agent. So we found that licensing is a particularly important uh, component of this. We've also found that state licensing regulation and oversight of gun dealers is also quite critical because, frankly, of the weaknesses in our federal laws. Our research shows that states that basically fill these gaps of the problems in our federal laws with purchaser licensing and good uh, regulatory oversight of retail gun sellers have far less less trafficking and less gun violence. So, so it seems like rather than a patchwork of state laws here, a standard uniform set of federal laws, which have been debated ad nauseum and haven't really gone anywhere for years, would, would be a better approach. Ala Lefkowitz, uh, what are the tools that law enforcement uh, have in this current climate to go after gun traffickers? You saw President Biden a few weeks ago announce uh, a beefed up uh, gun trafficking uh, enforcement from the Department of Justice. Absolutely. And there are uh, steps that federal law enforcement can take, you know, whether that's uh, criminal charges uh, with regard to either the source of the firearms, whether that's the dealer or whether that's the straw purchaser. Um, there's also all sorts of uh, regulations uh, that can, um, and you know, compliance inspections, revocation of licenses when it comes to the gun dealers um, that can be utilized by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms right now. All right, a very important discussion. We'll have to leave it right there. And our thanks to Ala Lefkowitz and Daniel Webster. Thank you. Thank you.